Bitcoin hoodie guy coming back here with another Casper video. Mike Tyson, the like and subscribe button. Well, thanks for that, Mike. Well, the market dominance is really more important than the price because at the end, if the market dominance stays the same and the market goes up, then we'll just go up whatever the market does. So to outperform the market from here, then we need to, the market dominance to go up. A lot of bullish things on the horizon. You can see that last, you know, on the 30th, we were down to 0.11% market dominance. We did get back up to 0.13. We've kind of worked back down the last couple days, but that's where we're at. But then the hash rate, it got up to almost 1.4 exahash there. So that's pretty amazing. And right now it's 1.33 exahash. You can see the fees there. Uh, November 2nd, 737,000 CASPA. Proof of work still in that number three spot, 775,000. Uh, markets red, you can see we're down under 11 cents. Doge pulled back under 15 cents. Bitcoin, you know, barely over 68,000. Mining pools, Binance is number five, 47 petahash, nothing's changed there. One of the most important charts is the DXY, the dollar index. Typically, this is the five-year chart. You can see that in the last bull market in COVID, it was pretty strong at the very beginning of COVID. And then by the time the bull market had a top, you can see there in May, it was down to 90 on this index. It did work its way back up a little bit toward November when there was a second top. It was strengthening. But you can see throughout the bear market, it was strengthening and basically... It, its max strength out was October of 2022, which basically marked the bottom for Bitcoin. It did go down, and then it's been going sideways for, you know, a year, a little bit more, basically. It's kind of been strengthening. It was falling down here since June, and then it's re-strengthened. But typically, for Bitcoin to go up, you need that going down. Everything, you know, tied into the market together. Poly market seems like as a lot of people expected is the gap is closed 55% Trump 44% or almost 45% Harris a large way most people think that it could be short term games most people think that Trump's a little bit more bullish for crypto uh, it could be if Harris does win there could be a short term drop I could see stuff going down 20% just off that because most of the crypto market thinks she's worse. But we'll tell, you know, they're probably both going to print a ton of money. So in the end, it probably doesn't matter. You can see the FedWatch tool got 98.9% .9 chance of a rate cut there. So a lot of people are anticipating that. Also, I saw Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, saying that he doesn't think that interest rates are going to get as low as other people think. So something to pay attention to. Something else was I saw this article. I saw some people talking about this, how smart contracts are set to launch in Q1 by someone named Frank Jacob. And here is, uh, I can put a link in the description and pinned comment for this. But you can see that he's talking about how there's some insider people that are remaining, remaining anonymous and how some uh, the, you know exchanges are working on some infrastructure to set up. But here it says, recent spike in GitHub activity on Casper's repository with several code branches labeled contract and DAP support. So I don't know, I've spent like maybe an 45 minutes or an hour last night clicking around the different spots in the Casper GitHub and I didn't really, I don't, but I don't know what I'm looking for. So maybe you know your way around GitHub better. Let me know in the comments if you do. If you see anything in there about the contract or DAP branches, you know, code branch labeled, um, it'd be interesting to know. I couldn't see anything, but I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm like a five-year-old in here. So yeah. And now we're going to be talking about what was kind of in the, the title and thumbnail there. $1.53. And I think market dominance is one of the most important things to pay attention to for CASPA to reach where we think it can go this next cycle. But also you really have three different types of people in CASPA right now. You have some people that are maybe just trading it. They don't really even care that much about the project. They're playing around trading it, buying, selling, shorting, whatever. And then you have people that are just like Bitcoin maxis. They're loading up and their goal is to try to stack as much CASPA. And unless they really need some money this cycle, they might not even sell. And then you got some people that have been acquiring this first half of the bull market, you know, through the bear market, first half of the bull market. Because really once Bitcoin bottomed out at 17000 really is when the the bull market started, you know, because everything's been up since then uh, and going sideways and up. But 
at the end of the day, too, there's people that are going to be trying to take profit next year. And that category, this stuff is kind of where you're trying to figure out what's possible. To me, it feels like the overall market cap for, for crypto could reach between 8 to $10 trillion, Maybe it goes more. I don't know. I think that it depends on how much global liquidity is pumped in there. Because right now you have these ETFs that have just, you know, now there's over a million Bitcoin in the ETFs, but the price has basically been going sideways. So, uh, yeah, there's not enough Bitcoin to go around. That affects the whole crypto market on the price of Bitcoin, but it feels like it's not going to go to the 500,000 that people think. And it feels like I could see it even going a little bit under 160, but I feel like 160 to 200K is where Bitcoin could land. So we could be looking at potentially an eight to ten trillion dollar market cap with Bitcoin having falling down to like a 40, 40 some percent market dominance. So in that scenario where Bitcoin hits eight trillion and Casper got up to half a percent of market dominance, that would be a dollar fifty three. So that's where I came up with that number. Casper would roughly be a forty billion dollar market cap. One percent. It would be 80 billion, which would be 306. Now, if it get that same market dominance, but then we got to 10 trillion, then you'd be looking more like at a 50 and 100 billion, which put us in the two to four dollar range. Where I do kind of feel like that dollar 53 to four, maybe five dollars is where we're gonna end up. So in theory, maybe something happens and there's some right narratives, and it goes up to one and a half percent market dominance. Uh, nothing is guaranteed, so. Uh, you know, there's a lot of chicken left on the bone just to get up to half a percent of market dominance. We know 10 blocks per second. We know some tier one listings. So there's there's lots of there's a lot of catalysts on the horizon. And, you know, pretty much all possibilities are on the table. But I like kind of looking at this market dominance. Now, let's just take a look at some other projects market dominance. Well, if you're finding the video helpful and you want to help support the channel, you can be a channel member for 99 cents once a week. I make a little video just showing the percentages of what's in my portfolio. Sometimes it changes a little bit. Sometimes I something moves around or I might convert, you know, ADA to this or that. Um, you can just do that in the pinned comments description. Click right there. Uh, you don't have to join. You can join. You can join for one month, quit, whatever. Uh, just throwing that out there. Thanks. So right here, you know, market dominance. Bitcoin's, you know, was hit 60%, but it's hanging there at 59%. But you can go back and look at the historical around November 21st, 2021. Uh, pretty close to the top. You know, now Cardano peaked a couple months earlier uh, and when it had its smart contracts launched back then. But let's just take Shiba Inu. If you take the stable coins out, Shiba Inu is number 10. And so around November at that time with Shiba Inu, around November of 21, right there, it was about 0.64%. So at that time, 0.64% got you top 10. So just kind of showing you where potentially what market dominance Casper would need to be in the top 10 at the bull market top. Now let's look at Doge. So Doge here on the, you know, its market dominance peaked in May, got up to 3%, you know, when right before Musk went on SNL and everyone was getting hot and heavy on Doge. And actually I had some Doge. I got some Doge. I said 2020 the other day and I was just, it was mistaken. It was 2021. It was when Doge was like a penny and a half, a penny, right around a penny, and I saw the Wall Street bet guys after the GameStop stuff. We're like, let's. I saw them on Reddit, like, hey, let's get Doge to a dollar, and that was somewhere around around February. There, it had 0.43 market dominance, um, and I didn't play it right. It got up to 70 cents over, and I ended up making like five thousand dollars off it, but uh, it could have been like twenty five thousand if I'd have just sold when Musk went on SNL. But anyways. At that November time, because that's what we're looking at, November of 2021, right here, November of 2021, Doge fell to about 1.22 market dominance. So when you go back and look at this historical chart, you're basically needing 0.6% market dominance to get in the top 10 at this time of kind of really when the close to the market top. Uh, so that gives you an idea with CASPA where it would need to land that basically, potentially, this would put it being over 0.5%, being 0.6%, or even up to 1%. It's going to land it in the top 8 to 10 in coin market cap. You know, right now, what are we setting at 29, around 29 or something? So just some things to throw out there. Let me know what market dominance you think that Casper could get to. I mean, I guess if you looked at BNB and everything, it's got up to, and Doge, you know, and Cardano, 
when they've peaked out, like Doge peaked out in May of 2021, it got over 3%. Cardano, I think, got up to 3 4%. BNB's got up to that. So there's a lot of different options on the table. And uh, I think it helps when it's boring times because the market might not be as big as everyone thinks. Or maybe it's bigger. That's why it's good to dollar cost average out because if you just sell in one lump change and it goes up, then, you know, yeah, if you time it perfectly, you're happy. But you could easily sell off part of your position and then the price keeps going up. And you thought it was a blow off top, but the blow off top hadn't happened yet. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and have a good day.